Hello everyone, and welcome to what's probably going to be the final part of Jesse, because it seems like our protagonist had reached an answer to the question of who did this murder. But just so you know in advance, there is a sequel to this game which we're probably going to be playing, Yay! so stay tuned for more of that in the future. As for now, let's see what comes of this mystery. I head back into the hallway, but he's nowhere to be found. Where is Gursky? I can hear his voice. I find Detective Gursky in the main area, taking down everyone's contact information. Detective! Whoa, hey, I'm just getting everyone's number so we can call you later on. No need for that. I figured it out. Really? Yeah, really. Really. <laughs> All the eyes in the room are suddenly focused on me. What? I hope we really do know. Do you know who the killer is? Otherwise, it's a pretty grandiose you claim. figured it out? Mm-hmm. Well, I figured out the major bits, at least. Aww. Oh, come on. I think we're pretty sure of who did it. Well, you're going to need to fill in the gaps before you try to sell this as the absolute truth. But I'm willing to listen. Okay, let's see if we can do it. Let's go over what we know, starting with the timeline. You arrived around noon, so you were here before everyone else. Yes, that's true. Of the rest of the people here, who arrived at the coffee shop first? Oh, no. Crap, we have to remember? We actually have to try to remember this stuff. Well, um... It was... Hold on a second. Oh, side note, if you don't hear a lot from uh, Lady Shur, it's because she has the hiccups in this episode. <laughs> I'm sorry. And it's trying to stifle them. Also, I just tried scaring the crap out of her, and it didn't seem to work. You did scare me, but I'm still hiccuping. All right, well, regardless. Well, I've been thinking about this, and I think it was Miss Bergstrom. Okay. It was Miss Bergstrom. Everyone else was here by the time I arrived, you know. Right. That's true. Uh-oh. But there's... <laughs> well, well, they're just going to keep asking you until you get it right. Yeah, but I... All right. Anyway, let me just move on. But I think she was here first, and hopefully it'll get explained, at least from what my theory is of what happened. Uh, well, then the first one would have been Chance, because right. she works here. It was Chance. You came in around two to work, right? Sure did. Right. Who came in after her? And then it was Kizaki, right? Yeah, Kizaki uh, came yeah, in. Yeah, I think so. And then, because he saw Sara, mm -hmm. it was Kizaki. He even saw a chance cleaning all the espresso machines after she argued with her manager. That's right. The manager sounded pretty angry with her. He said she messes up like this too often. Oh, chance. Way to rub it in. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> all right, and after Kizaki, who came in? Sara. It was the victim, Sara. Chance and Kizaki both saw her come in. And after that, but sometime before 2.40, Sara was murdered. Then Miss Bergstrom came in and found you with the body. Indeed. Yeah, then there was all that yelling and accusing and all that other stuff. So how was the victim killed? She was suffocated. With what? With duct tape. The culprit used it to bind her as well as seal her mouth and nose. After she died, the killer removed all the duct tape and threw it away in the men's room. That makes sense, but what about the knife? It was meant to incriminate Chance, a red herring. The culprit overheard her argument with her manager, so he or she th knew the kitchen would be empty. After Sarah died, the culprit removed all the tape, snuck into the kitchen, stole a knife, and stabbed Sarah with it. So who do you think the true culprit is? Well, it was clearly Miss Bergstrom. Definitely. Are you sure about that? Indeed. 100%. Yeah, definitely. I'm positive. What? That makes no sense. Why would I do something like that? Because she was selling those top secrets. Uh, oh geez, what was it again? Um... I'm trying to remember now which way it was. I don't... I'm pretty sure it was this one. Uh, was it? Yeah. Because revenge is just lame, but I think it was... I'm going to save, just to make sure, because if we screw this one up, I don't want to have to do this all over again. But she stole from Auten Engineering, but something went wrong with the deal. Okay. Because Kizaki was involved somehow, and I think that screwed things up, maybe? Mm, maybe. Maybe. Sara stole from Auten Engineering for you, but something went wrong with the deal. You think I'd do something as dirty as hiring a corporate spy? Uh-oh. Yeah, I think you would. And worse as well. 
I glance over at Kizaki, but he doesn't make eye contact. Well, let's put it this way. I have a testimony that Sara did, in fact, steal information from Watton Engineering. And considering the situation, I believe that she came here to deliver that information. The USB drive that held the information is nowhere to be found. Which leads me to believe that whoever she was supposed to meet with did meet up with her. Biodev imaging is still a new face in the live cell market place. I'm sure a little kickstart from the competition's research files couldn't hurt. You're the only person here with ties to Biodev. Do you wish to deny asking Sarah to steal information for you? In case you forgot, I was the last person in. Sarah was already dead by the time I got here. Yes, but you were here earlier, around lunchtime, I'm assuming. Yes, but that wasn't your first time here today. You came here before Chance arrived. Aha, that's what I thought. Mm -hmm. Because someone did mention that earlier in the episode, what if someone's waiting in the bathroom? So, yeah, I, I think remember. that's exactly what happened. But why did she come back in then? The nail. To Her get fake it? nail was left behind. Remember we saw it in the trash can? Yeah. So, so she came it back been to get it? To her. That's what I'm assuming. But she, she didn't. Ah, oh, sorry. You come here often enough that you know when her shift starts. So you came before she did so that she wouldn't see you. You hid in the bathroom to wait for Sarah. When you heard Chance and her manager arguing, you suddenly got the idea to frame Chance. You knew the manager and Chance would both be out of the kitchen, so it was a golden opportunity to plant evidence that only Chance should have access to. You killed Sarah's plan, then removed all the duct tape, planted the knife, and escaped through the door in the men's room. That sounds like a solid theory, but then why did she bother to come back? The nail. Isn't it more incriminating for her to return? Nope, the nail would have nailed her. <laughs> That's what's been bothering me for a long time, but I thought about it, and I finally understand why she came back. Your false nails. What? I found one in the bathroom already, stuck to that huge pile of duct tape that you used to kill Sarah. She fought hard when you restrained her, and your nail broke off in the struggle. Unfortunately, you didn't notice until after you had escaped. You replaced it with a new one, but then you noticed that you were bleeding. The police would now have your DNA as proof that you were the murderer. With Sarah's line of work and her new job, they were bound to consider you as a suspect at some point in time. You knew you had to get rid of it immediately. You couldn't return through the emergency exit, so you had to take a chance and come in from the front. Unfortunately, when you came back, I had already discovered the body, so you decided to try to frame me instead. Uh, I... Trying to frame everyone, huh? Hmm. Jennifer stands in shock for a few seconds. Have Who's we ever Jennifer? referred to as Jennifer before? <laughs> With a sudden burst of energy, she pushes me aside and races for the door. Wait! Oh, Kizaki! Oh! Action, Kizaki! Nice job! Look at her, like, awkward thumb. Kizaki races after her <laughs> and grabs her by the wrist. <laughs> Let go of me! And there's a... Oh! Oh, no! You got bitch slapped. <laughs> Did you hear that? Hold on a second. Oh! One more time. <laughs> I could just do that all day. She spins around and slaps him in the face. He winces. That was quite a wince as well. And stumbles back hat. a few steps. Are you alright? I'm fine. Miss Bergstrom is already heading towards the front door, but Detective Gursky steps in her path. That's enough. Oh, it's the most policing he's done all day. <laughs> she skids to a halt and desperately searches the room for another exit, but I'm already blocking the passage to the hallway. She sighs and shakes her head resignedly. I'm such a fool. Running is the biggest proof of guilt, no? I suppose I should have seen this coming. You are a fool. And Big plus, fool. we know who you are in everything, so you're pretty much done. Fine. I confess. It's just as you said. Really? I got it? 100%? Wow. Sweet. She's lucky there was no one in the men's room either time. <laughs> well, we did stumble in that one time when she was in there. I guess, I guess she was looking for it. Yeah, but she didn't get it, even though she knew exactly where it was. She pulls up her sleeve and unstraps the watch around her wrist. This is the USB drive. Everything on it belongs to Otten Engineering. Oh, does it now? Well, now it's confiscated as evidence. Yeah, why did she tell us that? Why did you even do it in the first place? That greedy woman came to me today saying that someone else had offered her even more money for the information that I hired her to steal. Oh, really? She said that I'd have to pay a much higher price if I was still interested, and that I should meet her here to make the exchange. 
Well, that's interesting. People like her are the reason the world is hurting so much. Because of her greed, dying people are being denied the care they need. Um, aren't you involved in this as well? She got what she deserved. Well, you certainly have blood on your hands as well. How can you say that? W what? You have no right to decide who deserves to live and who deserves to die. Yeah, Gandalf moment. <laughs> What's the exact quote? Uh, something uh, about uh, having the power to deserve who deserves life and who deserves death. I'm not sure. If you can quote it in the comments, that's a huge thumbs up to you. <laughs> you spoke so finely of saving lives and doing good work in this world, but you are so quick to shed the blood of another. I... You say that it's for the greater good, but it was really just for yourself, wasn't it? I just thought that... Her voice trails off. Well, we got her now. I opened my eyes, slowly, struggling to maintain my composure. I didn't know that affected us so much. I know you thought you were doing the right thing, but there is nothing in this world that will make the weight of killing someone go away. You're going to spend the rest of your life with that burden, desperately trying to find a way to make that guilt disappear. I'm sorry. Outside the window, a police car with flashing lights pulls up. Finally! Wow, I didn't think they'd ever arrive. I thought there might have been a last twist at the end that he was going to be someone else as well. Mm -hmm. But I guess he really was a police officer. Good job. Detective Gursky pulls out a, hand, a pair of handcuffs and snaps them gently on Miss Bergstrom's wrist before leading her outside. I sink down to the chair and lean back. I feel so drained. I wish I could just go to sleep and not wake up for at least a year. Come on, you're just up for like <laughs> 30 minutes or a half hour, dude. <laughs> it's gonna pass out all over again. No, oh, hey, Kizaki? Kizaki? Yeah, well, no. I mean... No? What? What do you mean? Actually, my name oh. is Naoki. What? Okay, and what is the significance behind that? Naoki, huh? You look different. Mm. Well, he's not wearing the hoodie, and he's not wearing glasses or his cap. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm not sure how he looks that much different. That's sort of the point. Of a disguise, I mean. I like how it's crossed off. <laughs> okay. Uh, disguise? He may have changed his appearance, but he doesn't seem to have changed his personality at all. It looks like the whole shy guy thing wasn't an act. In fact, he seems even shyer now. Was there something you wanted? Yes, actually. We need to talk. Uh-oh. Really? Just the two of us? About what? Um, we have a little bit of a problem with this case. Oh, no. What do you mean, a problem? What are you talking about? I thought we all solved this and wrapped it up very nicely. Well, the job I was originally given was to retrieve the USB drive and to find who wanted the information from all in engineering in the first place. Okay. Well, you know. The police have the USB drive now, so it's as good as safe. Unless the police are not to be trusted or are bought off by someone else. And Miss Bergstrom already confessed to hiring Sarah, so what's the problem? Miss Bergstrom said that Sarah claimed someone else was interested. If this third party really is after the info, we need to know. I assume that third party was you, but uh -oh. I guess it's not? Well, that does complicate things, I suppose. A third party is involved. I suppose that would explain why Sarah had an ID for biodev imaging. She was likely hired to steal research from them as well. Still, all this corporate backstabbing doesn't really have anything to do with me, and I'd really like to get away from this place as soon as possible. Well, that's all very interesting, but I don't see why you'd bother to tell me any of this. We think your ability might be useful in figuring out the third party. My ability? What? I quickly glance around the coffee shop. Everyone else is already gone, but I lowered my voice anyway. How do you know about that? You're not the only one with extra abilities, you know. Wait, you have a superpower too? Were you the one talking to me telepathically? I have a perfect memory. I remember everything around me. Sights, sounds, smells, everything. Okay. So that's why Once he I knew the menu. It, I remember it forever. I guess so. So earlier when I asked you about what this place sells to see if you really were a regular customer here or not. I lied. I've never been to this coffee shop before in my life. Oh, Kizaki or I can Naoki. I the entire menu for you if you want, though. Mm, you don't have to do that. I suppose I should have been suspicious when you answered so specifically. A normal customer would say something like one or two dollars rather than give an exact price. It 
It's really useful for missions where I have to follow and observe. Missions? Are you a secret agent? I suppose I have you to thank for the voice in my head giving me information about Sarah as well. Is he gonna know nothing about that? Actually, that was my boss. Oh, okay. Boss. Your boss? So you're the one who was leaking information about me. All that time chatting online, you were just telling your boss what I was up to. I thought we knew that already. Well, we did. <laughs> I guess. But it really would be a good thing if you could work with us. Maybe. There is a sequel to this game, so I'm guessing that's gonna be what happens. Um, I don't know. I'd really rather have as little to do with this as possible. And honestly, I don't know why your boss thinks you need my help anyway. You've got it all wrong, detective. Oh, there they are. Aki. Aki? Oh. Oh. It's a child. At the entrance of the cafe stands a figure stunningly similar to Naoki. How is that similar to him? Well, is it talking about the one with the hair and the ponytail? It's wearing his exact clothes. Wait. Oh, yeah, that looks like a girl. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. I thought... <laughs> I wasn't sure. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's just like him except a female, and then there's someone else looking in? I don't know who that is. I don't know. A young girl trails at her side, peering cautiously into the cafe at me. Hmm... Aki, am I to assume that you're the boss that Naoki speaks of? Guilty as charged. Oh ho ho. She smirks as she looks me over, sizing me up. It would really mean a lot if you agreed to work with us. But just so you're clear, we don't need your help. <laughs> well, thank you. Wow. That's very kind. You need ours. What's that supposed to mean? Ooh, and it leaves off there. I like that. Interesting. And we didn't find out who that other girl was. No. Hmm. I have to say, this was a very good visual novel. I liked it. Definitely a big improvement over the last one we played. Well, yes, of course. And I really do want to see more, so I'm glad that I bought both of the games. And I know there's also a third one, but that comes separately, so I'll have to buy that as well. But I'm planning to, I mean, as long as the second one is as good as this one. I just kind of wish that it was longer. Yeah, well, that's why we have a sequel. I know, that's true. <laughs> but yeah, good stuff. So yeah, I would highly recommend buying this if you haven't and playing along. I'm not sure if there's uh, alternate routes, but perhaps. And we know that there's going to be more in the next one to come, which we'll probably be playing shortly. I mean, I think there's a good chance it'll probably be the next one we do. Yeah, that sounds about right. So I hope you all enjoy this one. Keep an eye out for the next series, which will probably be shortly after this episode. And until then, stay well, everyone. Bye.